Okay, so today I wanted to talk to you briefly about the Medtronic's um, pacemaker that you will find in a lot of critical care settings. This is a dual chamber pacemaker. Temporary pacemaker works with epicardial wires, uh, temporary uh, transvenous wires, as well as pacer swans. Uh, this is a, a kind of very versatile pacemaker generator that can be used with any of those different devices. It has a very simple interface. As you can see, there's um, right here the rate knob and uh, that's adjusting your rate right here. When you turn on the device it defaults at 80, 10, and 10 as far as your rate and your MAs for atrial output as well as ventricular output. So adjustment for your atrial MAs would default right beside it here, which is the knob right here. And again, for your ventricular MAs, which would be just to the right of that as well. There's also a menu select button, which is right here, which will get you to the um, different mode settings and um, kind of uh, some of the different specifics with uh, adjustment for your sensitivity and that kind of thing. So we'll take a look at that next, but just familiarizing yourself with the main interface here. This is the lock button right here. I just wanted to point that out. This is the uh, lock interface, which will kind of keep you from making mistakes or you know somebody messing with it. This is your uh, pacing and sensing indicators for your atrial and then ventricular inputs or excuse me, outputs here. So you have your pacing versus sensing, so you can see what's actually happening uh, on, this, on the pacemaker itself without actually having to look at the rhythm. So also, we have, of course, your on-off, which to turn this off, you press and hold. This is a, uh, a four-second pause right here, as well as the, this right here, which is your emergency button, which when you press this button, it turns this on in an asynchronous mode at a default rate of 80 and your maximum MAs, which are uh, 20 and 25. So it would be 80, 20, and 25, okay? And taking a look at your pacemaking menu set up here for the different modes. When you press the menu button, like I had said before previously, you would be able to access this pacemaking setup right here. And this table uh, kind of tells you a little bit about it. You can see you can go from DDD to DVI, DOO, VVI. All of those different modes are going to be selected under the M tab right here. And you would rotate the knob. Uh, just show you right here. We'll go back one. You would rotate your knob here, and you would see that menu displayed right here. And you would use your selections with this tab right here. Okay. And all that's indicated here in your instructions here. And this is uh, where you also would find your atrial uh, output sensitivities and your ventricular output and sensitivities as well. Okay. And this is under listed in, and this talks about where it's listed on your menu. Uh, this also goes through here for adjustment of your atrial and ventricular sensitivity. And you can turn on atrial tracking or turn off atrial tracking. This would be where you would indicate that right there, okay? Just a couple other things to point out here. The connectors, which are the uh, push and pull type connector. Um, this is the uh, standard connector for transvenous um, and uh, the cables that you'll find as different types of connectors for your um, epicardial wires as well. And this goes over turning the device on and off. This now talks about your threshold, your sensitivity settings here for um, directions on finding your ventricular or atrial sensitivity threshold or your sensing threshold. Um, the patient is connected to every pacemaker. Uh, monitored on the EEG, you set the rate to at least 10 below the patient's intrinsic rate. 
this ensures non-pacing. So what your goal here is is to find out where that threshold is. And so you would then set your maze on the output there and you would then decrease your sensitivity to uh, from the very low point all the way up. So battery replacement just uh, as a word of caution when you see the battery the uh, light indicating that your battery life is minimum you need to uh, go ahead and change that out. Um, you pacemaking you have 15 seconds uh, to replace that battery. However, if you wait a long time with that battery light or the battery symbol indicating on there, it uh, really will go uh, less than 15 seconds if you don't go ahead and replace it within a relatively reasonable time frame. All right, well, that concludes our uh, quick tutorial about that, and I appreciate your time, and thank you for watching.